Okay, so in this problem, we have to find the Taylor series for this function centered at c equals 1. So the formula for the Taylor series is the following. So we have f of x, and that is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity. And then we have the nth derivative of our function evaluated at c divided by n factorial, and then it's times x minus c to the n. So it's actually a power series uh, centered at c. And so all we really have to do is figure out what this coefficient is. So I like to do these problems uh, in steps. We'll start by trying to find a pattern for the derivatives. So first, let's go ahead and rewrite this function. So we have f of x. And we can bring the x on the bottom upstairs. So because it's x to the 1 on the bottom, when we bring it up, it'll be 6x to the negative 1. And now let's just start differentiating. And we'll just do it for a little while. And then we'll see if we can find a pattern. So f prime of x. Using the power rule, you bring down the negative 1. So you get negative 6x. And then negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. And let's do it again. So f double prime of x. This is equal to, well, negative 2 times negative 6 will give us 12. And then we subtract 1 from the negative 2. That will give us negative 3. And let's do it again. So f triple prime of x. So negative 3 times 12 will be negative 36. And then subtracting 1 will have a negative 4. And let's just stop there. So how do you know when to stop? Well, the real answer is you don't. I'm just going to take a chance and say, hey, maybe this is enough. So the next thing we have to do is plug in c. So c here is equal to 1. So I'm going to go ahead and do that over here on the side. Let me switch to a different color. How about this one? All right, let's plug in 1. So we have f of 1. Well, that's 6 times 1 to the negative 1. So that's just 6. And f prime of 1. Well, it's negative 6 times 1 to the negative 2. So that's just going to be negative 6. f double prime of 1. Let's see what this is. So it'll just be 12. Again, any, 1 to any power is 1, so that makes it pretty easy in this problem. Then f triple prime of 1 will just give us negative 36. So we have 6, negative 6, 12, negative 36. Not the most obvious pattern. So what do you do in a situation like this? Well, you just keep going. So let's go ahead and write out the formula and then see if we can find a pattern. So we have f of x. So let's write it out the long way. So the long way of writing it out uh, would be f of c. That's the first term. And you can see it's that just by plugging in the 0. Okay, you would get the first term would be the 0 with derivative at c over 0 factorial. And you would get x minus c to the 0. So the 0 with derivative is just the original function. So it's just f of c. And 0 factorial is 1. And this piece here is also 1. Now, that's not what I'm actually doing. I actually just have this memorized. So I have the long way memorized. And by the way, here, c is 1. So let's go ahead and put a 1 there instead. Plus, the next one will be the first derivative. So f prime of 1 times x minus c to the 1 over 1 factorial. Right, This one here is over 0 factorial. And again, c is 1. Keep messing up there with the c. c is equal to 1. Then f double prime of 1 <laughs> over 2 factorial. And then x minus 1 squared. So maybe you're starting to see the pattern now. You see it's 0 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial. And then you have a 1 here, a 2 here. So the next one will be f triple prime of 1. And yep, 3 factorial x minus 1 to the 3, 
etc. So it's an infinite series. So it's important to put, you know, the three dots to indicate that it goes on forever. So f of x. All right, so here's where we're going to hope to find a pattern. So f of 1 is 6. We have that from before. So it'll be 6 plus f prime of 1 is negative 6. So it'll be negative 6. 1 factorial is just 1. Then we have x minus 1 to the 1. f double prime of 1 is 12. So plus 12. 2 factorial is 2. And we have x minus 1 to the 2 plus f triple prime is negative 36. 3 factorial is 6. Then we have x minus 1 to the 3 plus dot, dot, dot. Let me just double check that. So f prime of 1 is negative 6. Looks good. f double prime of 1 is 12. Looks okay. f triple prime of 1 is negative 36. Looks okay. 2 factorial is 2. 3 factorial is 6. Okay, let's clean it up a little bit. So f of x is equal to, um, let's see, so this is going to be 6 minus, and then 6 parentheses x minus 1, plus 6. 12 over 2 is 6. How convenient. x minus 1 squared, minus 6. Very nice. x minus 1 cubed, plus dot, dot, dot. So I think now we can find a pattern. Let's, let's try. So this is the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity. So we're going to have a 6. We know that, so 6, because all the terms have 6s. And it's positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. That indicates that it's going to be some, something like negative 1 to the n. So let's write it, and then let's check. Let's see. If you plug in 0, you get 1, so it's positive. Plug in 1, you get negative 1 to the 1, so it's negative. Plug in 2, you get negative 1 squared, so it's positive. Plug in 3, you get negative 1 cubed, so it's negative. So the signs are okay. And then we have an x minus 1 appearing in every term except the first one. But that's okay. We can still write x minus 1 to the n, because when you plug in 0, you'll get x minus 1 to the 0, and it'll go away. So this should be the correct answer. This would be the Taylor series for f of x equals 6 over x, centered at c equals 1. So this is the long way of doing it. And this problem worked out really nicely. We were able to find a pattern, which is not always so easy. And I just want to emphasize that we weren't able to find a pattern until we wrote it out, you know, the long way. Right? We had to actually write it out and incorporate the division of the factorials. You see, because when we first found our derivatives and we plugged in our numbers, we just had 6, negative 6, 12, negative 36. It wasn't until we wrote it out and divided by the factorials where we saw that it was just going to be 6, negative 6, 6, negative 6. So that pattern did not emerge until we wrote it out the long way. I hope this video has been helpful.